Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to kick off the section on the standard model by looking at orders of magnitude. So let's get into it. Now, before we go on and look at what the standard model is, we need to have an appreciation of the size of particles and things in the standard model. So first of all, we're going to look at this thing called orders of magnitude. So it says here that physics involves the study of matter on a range of different scales, from very large galaxies to the smallest of particles. To help us describe and compare the sizes of objects that are either very large or very small, we can use powers of 10. These are known as orders of magnitude. For example, an object that is 1,000 times larger than another object is said to be three orders of magnitude bigger. So one order of magnitude is timesing by 10 once. So for the number 1,000, we can write that in scientific notation as 1 times 10 to the power of 3, and that 10 to the power of 3 there tells us it's three orders of magnitude bigger. And as we said here, it allows us to describe and compare the sizes of objects. So we're going to be comparing the sizes of different particles within the standard model. And it says here to note that scientific notation is commonly used to represent the powers of 10. And if you look at the table here, you'll see we have lots of examples showing the approximate size of different objects. So if we started off here at the height of a person, that is 10 to the power of 0. And remember, anything to the power of 0 is going to be the number 1. So because these values are in metres, 10 to the power of 0 would be 1 metre. So this is saying that the height of a person might be approximately 1 metre or, say, 2 metres. And then if you were to look at things that are bigger than that, you'll see here, for example, the height of a house is about 10 to the power of 1 metres. That is the same as 10 metres. And then getting even larger, the distance from air to Edinburgh would be 10 to the power of 5. And then the diameter of the Earth would be even bigger than that, 10 to the power of 7. And then we have the diameter of the Sun, which is even bigger. And then getting into larger scales here, we have the distance to the edge of the solar system, which is about 10 to the power of 13 metres. And lastly, the distance to the furthest known celestial object, which is a whopping 10 to the power of 26 metres. And if you look here, we've got a fun fact. So it says that from the table, we can see that the Earth is approximately 10 to the power of 7, i.e. 10 million times larger than you. So we said that the height of a person was approximately 10 to the power of 0, i.e. 1 metre, and the diameter of the Earth about 10 to the power of 7 metres. So if we're comparing 10 million metres versus 1 metre, then we're saying the Earth is about 10 million or 10 to the power of 7 metres bigger than us. And that's the same as saying that the Earth is about 7 orders of magnitude greater than a person. If we look at the table though and get into things smaller than the size of a person, then that is more like what we're going to be looking at in this section on the standard model, because we're going to be looking at lots of fundamental particles that have been discovered. So if you start at the height of a person again at about 1 metre, then you'll see this time we get into negative powers getting smaller and smaller in size. So the length of a peanut, for example, is about 10 to the minus 2 metres, which is the same as 0.01 metres or 1 centimetre. We then have a human hair at a size of about 10 to the minus 4 metres, a red blood cell, 10 to the minus 5 metres, the atom, 10 to the minus 10 metres, and then getting even smaller than an atom, we have a nucleus size of about 10 to the minus 14 metres, proton and neutron size about 10 to the minus 15 metres, the electron is thought to be about 10 to the minus 18 metres in size, and then quarks, which we'll discuss in a later theory video, is about 10 to the minus 19 metres, and then we have the neutrino, which is thought to be about 10 to the minus 24 metres in size. So these sizes here are what we're going to be looking at in this section. Now, I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this. Now, this simulation is made by Perimeter Institute, and it's called Quantum to Cosmos. I'll put a link down in the description so that you can explore it yourself. But if you look at the bottom here, we've got our scale, which is currently at 1 metre, and this is about the size of a person, i.e. you. And what we're going to do is delve into smaller and smaller scales so that you can see some examples of the kind of things that are those sizes. In other words, we're going to look at objects that have smaller and smaller orders of magnitude. So if we start off here at about the size of a person, that's about 1 metre, then we can get smaller and smaller, say to the size of a cat, then about 10 to the minus 1 metre for an apple, and then as we get smaller and smaller, we get to the size of a smartphone, for example, then the size of a coffee bean, then the size of a microchip, then we have an ant, a blue LED and a grain of sand, about 10 to the minus 3 metres, we then have a computer pixel, something called a tardigrade at about 10 to the minus 4 metres, we then have human hair width at about 10 to the minus 4 metres as well. Then have a white blood cell and a neuron at about 10 to the minus 5 metres. If we zoom in further at 10 to the minus 5 metres or 10 to the minus 6 metres, we get a red blood cell. We then have the size of bacteria. The size of the largest virus at about 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7 metres. The wavelength of visible light at 10 to the minus 7 metres. 
And remember that ranges from 400 nanometers at blue or violet light to 700 nanometers for red light. At 10 to the minus 7 meters, we have the limit of resolution for optical microscopes. We then have the size of the coronavirus at 10 to the minus 7 or 10 to the minus 8 meters. And we also have the current limit of the quantum world at this size, about 10 to the minus 8 meters. Zooming in further, we have quantum dots at 10 to the minus 9 meters. We then have the size of proteins as well. And at about 10 to the minus 10 meters, we have the size of a DNA double helix and the size of the smallest transistor. Moving on, we have the size of the hydrogen atom at about 10 to the minus 10 meters, 10 to the minus 11 meters. And then as we keep zooming in further, we get about 10 to the minus 14 meters or 10 to the minus 15 meters is the size of the protons and neutrons. And that's what we saw in the table. So if we keep going smaller than that, then we get to about 10 to the minus 17 meters at something called WIMPs. And WIMP stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particle. If we then get smaller than that, we have the size of the Higgs boson at about 10 to the minus 18 meters. And we also have a length change due to gravitational waves seen by LIGO. And then at 10 to the minus 18 meters, we have the size of the quark and then the size of the electron and neutrino as well at 10 to the minus 19 meters. And then as we get into smaller and smaller orders of magnitude beyond that, you see that we have nothing for a while until we get to about 10 to the minus 34, 10 to the minus 35 meters at this point here. And it actually goes no further. And this is called the Planck length. And if we click on this wee information here, it says, how small can things get? This small and no smaller. The Planck length is the fundamental size limit of nature. Go any smaller and the laws of physics break down. The Planck length is 100 quintillionth the size of a proton. Some theorists believe that at this scale, space is granular, it can no longer be divided into smaller increments. This is similar to the image on a computer screen becoming grainy at the level of pixels. So in other words, the Planck length is thought to be the smallest known quantity in the universe. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.